Hi guys, welcome back to the fossil preparation blog. Here are some fossils that we worked on last week. You may recognize them from watching the video, especially this one. Uh, I was working on that one quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, the pressure was too high on on the sandblasting machine and I did end up damaging all three of these, um, especially this one because it's just so small. I, I just I didn't recognize it in time, unfortunately. So this week, we're going to make sure we check the pressure on the sandblasting machine before we even start with it. Um, this one right here, though, I did work on quite a bit and ended up damaging this one the least because by the time I got to this one, I realized the pressure was still too high because I was working on this this one at 40, turned it down to 20 for this one, realized that was still too high, and turned it down to 5 PSI for this one. So we need to keep that in mind every time we're going to be working on the fossils. Today, I don't think we're going to be working with the air chisel very much, but I would like to work on cleaning up some of these fossils. So here's, here's a little guy right here, as you can see. Uh, there's a bit of fossil right here. I believe that is uh, the pagidium. Uh, there are a few others here that we want to work on. Let's see if I can find them. Here's some, there's one right there, and then here, right here is a little guy, and right here. Now these ones probably won't take very long, so I have several of them off to the side. All right guys, here we are, we're back. We're in the box, and as you can see, we have a rock here. And we are gonna be working on a teeny tiny little fossil in this guy, which is right here. We're gonna be working on that one right there. Now I am trying something, a few things different. As you can see, my left hand is in a glove this time. Uh, I'm doing this because A, my hand got really dusty last time I was doing this, and B, I know that aluminum oxide is not good to get in. Like, I know it causes skin irritations. I did not have any problems with it last time, so we're trying this just to see how it works. I'm afraid that it will affect my ability to maneuver the fossil around. And another thing we're trying today is we have put my cell phone in a plastic Ziploc baggie, not because there was a lot of uh, particle matter in the air, but because every time I take my hands out and touch the phone, I can get dust on it. And aluminum oxide is uh, very abrasive, and I don't want to ruin my phone. So hopefully this is still good enough quality with the Ziploc bag on that you can still see. So we're going to just go for it. Um, I do have my glasses off as I'm looking through the microscope. I found out that last time that having the microscope, using the microscope with the glasses makes it much harder to see uh, because it makes it much darker. Now, um, I do still have both the little rubber things around my arms. So here we go. We're going to test that and see how well we do. The PSI is around 5 PSI on the sandblasting machine, so hopefully we should be doing pretty good with that too. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So after exposing this, I don't actually think this is a trilobite fossil. I'm not sure what it is, but it doesn't look like a trilobite. I've removed lots of stuff around it, and I've tried taking stuff off the top. It looks just like a little bump in the matrix. So I'm going to pull it off to the side. I'm going to ask for some help on this one, because I don't think this is a trilobite. I think that this is actually a head of a trilobite and not a tail. Because I think that these two little bumps I'm seeing are the eyes. So we're going to expose it and take a look. And again, I'm going to switch back to uh, time lapse for this. So I did take my glove off because it did prove to be more of a problem than, a, than it was a help. So we're going to try maybe a different glove or something. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hit the time lapse. As I'm sandblasting this particular fossil, I am changing the pressure based on how much matrix there is to be removed. So if there's a very thick layer of matrix that needs to be removed, I crank the PSI up to around 20 or 40. If there's not much matrix that needs to be removed and I'm working directly on the fossil, I turn it down to 5 PSI. So here's what I was able to expose on this particular trilobite fossil. It does have a little bit of damage uh, down the center lobe of, of it, right where my fingernail was pointing. Um, and it's a very small fossil. He is missing one free cheek, and the left cheek is intact. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, I don't think that this particular trilobite survived 
because um, if it did survive and all you found was a shell, both of the free cheeks would be missing because it's, it's an arthropod like a crab, and they they shed their, their exoskeleton and then they pop out and they're all uh, soft and squishy and then they grow a new hard external shell uh, until it's time to jump out of that one. And so because this one has a free cheek intact, I'm pretty sure that this one was munched on by something and then died because of that. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Big shout out to the University of Utah for opening up this lab for me. And also another big shout out to the University of Utah Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program for financing this. Thank you so much.